catching up on a bunch of silly projects. Here we go with ballistics, internal and external. Just made a video, you might see it after this or before this or not at all because you may not care, about why we bottleneck cartridges versus straight wall cartridges. One's like a soup can and one is literally like a bottle. This would produce, if I squeeze it this much, a large squirt at the top if it was a pinhole. This is an example of a necked up bullet cartridge. Primer here, propellant here, and a big bullet here. This is actually a type that was used for a quasi-literal uh, muzzle-loading cartridge. You'd load it muzzle first, just drop it in, and then you'd screw a barrel on it. It was a muzzle-loading, breech-loader, anti-bottleneck. It had the, the effect of, if it was a pinpoint, where the ignition would happen here and spread out very evenly behind a semi-ball bullet. Interesting, isn't it? So what's the usefulness of all these things? What's the goal? Well, the goal is whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to hit a target accurately and make sure that all the holes are perfectly straight in, you may have completely the opposite needs that you would have for taking out a battleship. Let's get to it. A 6,000 foot per second, five grain, 17 caliber pellet, or uh, 17 HMR, which is a neck down 22 caliber rim fire that fires a 17 caliber little tiny rifle bullet, can over penetrate and do little damage to pretty much everything on the planet because it just goes right through. This is like literally the equivalent to shoving a very small needle through somebody and expecting it to actually cause their heart to explode. Your head's not likely to explode. However, this five grain 17 caliber projectile it 6,000 feet per second. I mean, mock, I don't even want to calculate. Depending on shot placement, would take out almost anything, including at one point, yes, someone did this, an elephant. 1,250 feet per second average, 115 grain, 9 millimeter hollow point bullet may stop inside of and kill most targets. A 50 foot per second 71,000 grain, 300 caliber or 3 inch cannonball shot put, thrown at 35 miles an hour, might kill somebody. Shot placement may be very important. All of these have the same 400 foot pounds of energy and lethality rating on paper. Practicality is what matters here, not paper examination. Thresholds for whatever you're talking about. Supposed ones. 1,000 foot per second is the average for hollow point expansion threshold velocity. 2,200 feet per second is the threshold velocity for the following expressions you see talked about. Water, tissue ca water or tissue cavitation, temporary hydrostatic shock. And 2,700 feet per second is for tungsten penetrators average velocity that I've been able to look up. And it's 50 foot pound for fatal impact possible and 1,000 foot pound for fully lethal impact. Armor piercing won't be discussed today because that has nothing to do with lethality for anything other than a car I might shoot because they're trying to run me over. I'm not anti-personnel, I'm anti-bad driver. Cavitation, rapid changes in the pressure in the liquid lead to formation of small vapor filled cavities called bubbles or voids. No kidding. In places where the pressure is relatively low. Upon collapse, they can generate a shock wave that's strung very, very close to the bubble. This is called inertial cavitation. Non-inertial cavitation is a process in which the bubble in fluid is forced to oscillate in size and shape due to some form of energy input, such as an acoustic field. This is based on the idea of the speed of sound and that sort of thing in the material that you're dealing with. Kinetic energy is the function of the bullet's mass and the square of its velocity, as reference with a cannonball versus pellet gun. But this acoustic field idea is very in, in, intriguing because people want to talk about cavitation, hydrostatic shock, uh, temporary cavities, that sort of thing. The magic bullet speed that's supposed to be existent. Supersonic compression. Speed of sound in body tissue. <clears throat> now, I made this mistake before because I literally did a math error. What is the speed of sound in tissue? 5,050 5, feet per second, approximately. 
This is 2.3 times the speed of 2200 feet per second that's considered the magic speed we notice has a very extreme effect in ballistic gelatin and maybe in people or animals. Or is it just that it's the elastic threshold for the tissue that's exceeded near Mach 3? For whatever reason, we don't know what it is. Bullet expansion. Bullet deforms, increases its diameter, and cr increases drag. This has the effect of dumping more energy into the object and stopping with ended, making a larger wound channel for bleed out and prevents over penetration so that it only hits your target. But does that really have stopping power? Mythical stopping power, one stop shot. Training classes often advise that you simply use the bullets that are identical to those used by your local police force so they cannot blame your ammunition or use it as an excuse to arrest you when you're simply carrying it. What has this got to do with any of this? The hypothesis, theories, and math involved in all of this are being exploited here in this video for one reason. They're not the be-all and end-all. If you're talking foot-pounds energy impacted from 22 caliber up to 30 caliber, these actually matter. When you go to lower calibers like BB gun pellets or pellets out of a shotgun barrel hitting individual objects or even birds, you find out that the numbers don't match and foot-pounds equals drop power. And obviously, again, a 3-inch cannonball hit hitting someone in the head and then hitting them in the stomach where they pick it up and beat you with it with a, like it's a hammer. It doesn't have to go 50 feet per second, aka 35 miles an hour. It's a blunt instrument. And a baseball bat is a, neck, a bottleneck version of, a, of, of, the, of, the, uh, of your cannonball there. So there we go. <clears throat> Hypothetical ideal sphere versus baseball bat. The baseball bat will win if you're not aware. It's a 10 pound bat versus a 10 pound cannonball. Yeah, 7 to 1,000 grains is apparently about 10 pounds. All three of those have the same foot-pound rating and are very, very different. Same thing with usage, shot placement, and intent. Fear factor, noises, brown pants factor. Stopping factor, or stopping power. The reason for the police officer yelling. The reason for the intimidation factor. The reason that most police who are saying don't want to shoot. Simply being in a house will get a burglar to leave in a very large number of cases. Someone's going to scream about home invasion. It's a burglar. It's not a home invasion. They're not taking you hostage so that they can bargain with Donald Trump to, to get someone released from someplace. That's not real. 90% of the time when you are in a home invasion scenario, they're just trying to steal something. Most of them do not want a confrontation. Crazy people want confrontations. Thrill seekers want confrontations. Use of lethal force should be only appropriate. Again, you use the same ammo the police do. If they claim that you're trying to militarize, make sure it's not military ammunition, at least in the area. Use something slightly less powerful, quote unquote, than the police. For instance, 22 caliber Velo Dog ammunition is an extremely unusual center fire 22 caliber Magnum bullet. Originally, these would have been considered 22 long. But if you load them with magnum propellant, just pack it with propellant, you get very close, if you're not aware of it, to if you use literally propellant for a pistol on purpose and use a long barrel 22 caliber pistol or a starter pistol converted because they are almost identical diameters. If you use a long barrel on it, you get the same performance as a 22 magnum, actually more than that. You get very close to a 223556 cartridge. The trouble is you have to make it a single shot because you have to overbuild it because it'll blow the gun up in your face. You can make a revolver, but it's only going to be a four shot, or maybe five. Probably four would be safer. And it is a center fire, which means it's going to have a primer that can blow out, so the whole chamber, the whole freaking arrangement has to be very sealed. But you end up firing what looks like a 22 caliber short to anybody at more than five feet away from you in a jury. And you're firing the equivalent to a rifle bullet practicality. These are not built anywhere because no one's ever built one of this one of these this way. You start off with the 223556 rifle barrel. Yeah. And you make a single shot out of it by cutting the entire chamber off, reboring it for 22 magnum and then sticking a center fire version of a 22 in it. Because the rim fire will split at the back. And the entire back end is essentially a 209 primer welded in or, or made part of the thing. It's a very unusual cartridge. The point of this is if you fire that 
on close inspection, they realize you've made something that will go absolutely if you use a one-foot barrel, British length, British legal length. You end up with something that will go straight through most body armor, except that you use a hollow point on purpose so that it stops that far, or about 75% in, and expands violently and comes to a stop. Or you can use the 22 caliber short or even BB or CB cap and aim accurately enough to say, I accidentally, I didn't mean to hit the target in the eye socket perfectly or in the mouth where it hits the back of the brain at the base of the spine. What would work? What's the real stopping power of a 700 feet per second pellet? Placement. What's the stopping power for a 12 gauge shotgun overboard to an 81 caliber elephant gun? The stopping power at that point doesn't matter what the speed is, it's going to hit. It's going to hurt. It's going to drop them. Load it with sandbags. Load it with marshmallows. What looks crazier to the jury if you're actually dragged in, if you have to defend yourself? Firing some crazy weird round or firing something very conventional working that accidentally did a good job? What works better? You having a reasonable explanation why you did it or not having to do it at all? What's the stopping power in your house that's most important? A reliable fucking lock. The mythologies around a lot of this has to do with anxiety of people really feeling scared. I'm currently a place with someone who who is like I was when I was living indoors, not obsessed with, but preoccupied with making failure impossible. All doors have two locks. They're two different brands, two different types. Period. One flimsy looking one that's overbuilt on the inside, so it'll trick somebody into try to mess with it. And the other one just as impressive, but just simply the deadbolt. The door frame and the door are more important than the fucking lock. A screen door with a really good lock doesn't do anything. A door frame overbuilt with steel plating, welded and bolted, does well. Especially if I reinforce it by drilling into the walls this far <clears throat> and putting in block points onto the rest of the frame. And in a house I had at one time, then pouring cement into the walls to reinforce it so it was a steel reinforced framework for the building. And the door looked like the flimsy gar garbage ones, you know, the flat plate one where you can see the edges where the, the, the veneer is coming off. <clears throat> yeah, the veneer was transferred onto a solid oak door. That's how you not have to pull a gun. What's the most effective way to stop your opponent? Don't let him in the building. Make sure the windows latch. Uh, make sure that you have any valuables made in such a way that they're either bolted down or you insure them so you don't give a damn, so you don't want to defend something you can easily get the insurance company to pay off. Or just own things that look like they're not really valuable, which is what I've done for a long time because I live outside. But yeah, you can throw a cannonball, a shot put at somebody, get the same amount of impact you can get from a Mach 7 uh, 17 caliber, 22 caliber pistol you got a hold of. Or go after them with a baseball bat, aluminum one. What's more effective? Next one I'll point out. Um, one of the craziest examples I've ever seen is a sharpshooter, a quick shooter, um, being attacked in his house. And he instinctively, because he trained for this for like years and years, doing this, you know, for show, shooting balloons, shot the guy w before he dropped, started at the top, shot him in each shoulder, cut the nerve bundles in one side. He was aiming for both of them hit the guy in each elbow in the hands, then the kneecaps, and then finally straighten the balls. Jail term was one year and a half. He got out really quickly, but threw him in jail for being an accurate shooter. He picked his shots too well and was too good at it. The jury didn't like that. The guy attacking him had an ax. I mean, literally an ax murder. His neighbor, crazy psychotic neighbor who was high on crack or something. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. By locks, not guns.